retention and stability is very critical for our dentures and it is difficult to get it in the mandibular dentures obviously because of the less surface area of the mandibular ridge and the mobile mandible nevertheless it is possible if we follow the correct method and practice it so in this video i will be demonstrating the method of mandibular border molding hi this is hina the voice behind dr teeth why smash your head in your textbook when we are here to make dentistry easy for you so before we proceed to the video don't forget to smash that subscribe button and also if you found the video helpful don't forget to like and comment as it motivates us to create more videos of this kind for more amazing content don't forget to visit our website where we have mcqs courses and much more so let's begin we begin by checking our special tray in the patient's mouth it is very important that the tray is at least 2 mm short so that we have enough space for the material and in this case the material is green stick and also don't shorten it too much because the green stick can fracture from those areas check the extension of your tray by placing it in the patient's mouth and asking the patient to do all kinds of movement protruding the tongue putting the tongue on the left side right side if the tray is lifting on doing any such movement it means the tray is overextended and you have to reduce it so don't neglect this step otherwise you might not get retention at all now we will start the border molding from the distolingual area so i'm going to heat up the green stick and apply a layer sometimes the green stick won't stick on the tray because it is wet so make sure that your borders are completely dry before you apply the green stick after that i'll use petroleum jelly on my fingers and i will build up the material i'll build up the flange with my hands this is very important then put the tray in the patient's mouth and ask the patient to protrude the tongue and place the tongue in the distal part of the palate in the right and the left buccal vestibules okay the middle portion of the lingual flange is developed by asking the patient to protrude the tongue and lick the upper lip from side to side after we are done with this the distal lingual and the middle flange will look something like this next we would be recording the anterior lingual flange again we'll apply the green stick mold it with our fingers and put it in the patient's mouth and ask the patient to protrude the tongue and also and also push the tongue on the anterior part of the palate protruding the tongue develops the length while pushing the tongue against the anterior palate it will develop the thickness of the flange so this is how it will look Next comes developing the retromolar area and the buccal flanges. Now for this we will ask the patient to open wide and close and for recording the buccal flange the cheek is pulled buccally and then moved upwards and inwards. Now to record the mesenteric notch the patient is asked to close while we exert a downward pressure on the tray. So put downward pressure on the tray. while the patient tries to close his mouth okay now we followed this particular sequence because because just by recording the lingual flanges throughout we can get the retention as you can see here we are getting posterior retention the last step is recording the labial flange this is done by lifting the lip outward upward and inward o u i outward upward and inward the thickness of the flanges may have to be adjusted you should not have very thick flanges and also you should not have very thin flanges to check whether the green stick material is underextended or has properly contacted the tissue just check for dull areas wipe it completely with dry cotton if the green stick areas are dull that means the tissue contact is proper but if you find any shiny areas in between 
means the tissue contact is not proper and you have to add more material in that area. So this is our completed mandibular border molding. Let us check the retention. So this is the anterior retention and this is the posterior retention. As you can see, it is very difficult to take it out. Then have some talk with the patient and see if there is any displacement of the tray. If there is, you have to adjust it. After we have verified everything, we'll remove the wax spacer and make holes in the tray to take the wash impression. So this was all about the mandibular border molding. I hope that you found this video informative and helpful in your practice. If yes, do let me know in the comment section below and also give a thumbs up because it motivates me to create more videos of this kind. If you want me to cover the maxillary border molding as well, please let me know and I'll be glad to cover it. So I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Alhafiz. Special thanks to Dr. Adnan for his valuable suggestions for creating this video.